Let's learn about angle measures and vocabulary. This is from Foxtrot. 135, negative 1. 60, square root of 3. 90, undefined. So what are you nerds up to? Just working on our tans. Want to switch things around and try some arctans? Arctans is another way, another word for inverse tangent. So on our agenda, we're going to go through some angle vocabulary. We'll be drawing the angles, finding coterminal and reference angles, and converting between degrees and radians. Also, first introduction into the unit circle for this year. Let's get ready. You're going to need your pencil and notebook. And here's some vocabulary. So when we draw an angle, we always make sure we put the, stand, the initial side on the positive x-axis. That's the initial side. Then we open it up and we draw to the terminal side. The terminal side is the one that can move around. So this angle is in standard position because it has a vertex at the origin and one ray on the positive x-axis. When we talk about the rotation, what we just did was we opened this up counterclockwise. So this is a positive angle. But if this is my x-axis and I'm opening down first, which is in a clockwise direction, that's going to be a negative angle. So we're going to be discussing both positive and negative angles in this unit. When we're drawing, remember that a full rotation is 360 degrees. And we're talking about positive 360, so you'd be going counterclockwise. Keep in mind, we are going to be drawing more than 360 degrees as well. So in this example, we're going to draw 300 degrees. So I put the end of my ray on the origin and my initial side on the x-axis. And then I'm going to go 300 degrees. I know that that's almost all the way around, so I'm going to end up in quadrant 4, which hopefully you remember your quadrants. So we're going to open up, and then we're going to be about 60 away. And it is just an estimate. Notice how I drew this arrowhead here. So you do want to show it so that you have the direction that you just drew. We're going to try to draw negative 150. So negative means I'm going down first in a clockwise direction and about to 30 away from the um, x-axis. So now I want to graph 1020. So if I think about that, 360 is a rotation. Another 360 puts me at 720. Another 360 will put me at 1080. And then I am um, subtracting 60 to get to the 1020. So that means I'm going to go around a little shy of 3. So when you go around more than once, you should start in the innermost and sort of snail your way out. So I'm going to, this would be my first ray, my initial side. And then I'm going to go around once. I'm going to go around twice. And then I'm going to go around 60 less, which we've already done. So it's going to come around to about there. And then we draw that ray. And that would be 1,000. 20 degrees. Coterminal angles. These are angles that are in the standard position with the same terminal side. So this side here, they share. So we could talk about a positive 120 going in that direction. But if we go in the clockwise direction, we're talking about the negative angle, and that would be negative 240. You could keep adding the 360 to these, and you could have multiple answers. Let's find the coterminal angles of a 40 degrees. I'd like you to find one positive and one negative. A hint is just draw the sketch. So you're going to draw your coordinate plane. We're going to label the 40. And then from my x-axis, I'm going to see if I can find another positive angle that comes around to that. And so that's going to be 360 plus 40. So we could say a positive 400. You don't need the positive, but that would be my positive one. Then if I want to do negative, I'm going to still start at my x-axis. I'm going to go in the clockwise direction, and that would go around. So I'd be doing 360 minus 40, and we're talking about a negative 320 degrees to give the negative for the direction. Reference angles. A reference angle is the smallest angle that the terminal side of a given angle makes with the x-axis. It's a big mouthful. Um, things to keep in mind that a reference angle must be positive. It must be acute, so less than 90. And it must be part of the x-axis. It could be um, the ray to the right on the positive, or it could be a ray on the left with a negative. So keeping those things in mind, if I'm in just the first quadrant, and I have my initial ray, 
and then I have this angle, my terminal, sorry, my terminal side, this would be my reference angle. It's positive, it's acute, and it is part of the y-axis. If I'm over in quadrant two, I still keep my first ray, my initial side, and then I'm going to open up, so I'm coming over and just quadrant two, but that's not my reference angle because that's obtuse. This one over here is my reference angle. It's positive, it's acute, and it does have a ray as part of the x-axis. If I'm down in my third quadrant, somewhere down here, so I would be drawing the angle this way, but that's a lot bigger than being acute. So we're only talking about this piece. So I would be doing 180 plus that little bit, sorry, minus, that angle minus 180 would give me that little piece. And then if we're over in the fourth quadrant and we have an angle here, the angle could be talking about like this, but this is the little angle that we want. So this reference angle would be here. And I know that I just said when you go down or in a clockwise direction, you're doing negative, but this is still going to be a positive reference angle. And this is, these are all going to be positive reference angles. And reference angles means we're going to be referring to them and we're going to do that more when we get into our trig. So if we put that together, we're talking about a, a reference angle there and there and there and there. So we can connect it for a lovely bow tie. Those are the angles that we want to look at. What I'm going for is we don't really, we don't want to do a bearing. We're not doing this angle in here where it comes back to the y-axis. Find the reference angle for an angle that measures 210 degrees. So I'm just going to do a sketch. We're looking at a little bit bigger than 180 and that would be 30. Positive? Yes. Find the reference angle for an angle that measures negative 100. So I'm going to draw that negative 100. Well, if I come down here, this is going to be negative 90, so a little bit more. So this is the 10 in here, but that's not the piece I want. I want this angle, so it's going to be a positive 80 degrees. It's acute, it's positive, and it comes back to the x-axis. Radians. So we are very familiar with degrees. We know that there's 360 degrees in a circle. Um, that just happens to be the unit that we measure. But you can also measure in radians, and it's a unit of angle measure based on the arc length. So if you look at this first picture, here we have the radius of a circle. And if I were to pick this big radius up and bend it over here, then they would equal the same thing. And then if I tried to see how many radii could I fit around, oops, <laughs> it's not letting me right there. It's going to be three and a little tiny bit. So if we look at this black picture, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and a little bit. So we fit pi radians across the top, and then the bottom half would be another for two pi. That's how many radians we have. We have really have 6.28, which we know is 3.14 times two in a full circle. This is just another co color-coded picture. And let's talk about converting. You need to be able to convert in both directions. So when you have the degrees, you're going to multiply whatever your number is, um, and then you'll end up with a pi. Usually, not always, but yeah, you will. <laughs> um, then you're gonna get degrees when you go that way. And if you have radians, you're going this way. So this will probably have a pi, but radians doesn't have to have a pi. That's what I meant. You could just have like five radians and then you would multiply by 180 over pi. So let's convert. When you're given degrees, we're gonna to go to radians. We do have to keep the negative. So negative 45 times pi over 180. Well, 45, there's two of those in 90 and there's two 90s in 180. So this means there's four 45s in there. I'm not gonna lose my negative. So this is the same as negative pi over four. And we're gonna use radians a lot, we're gonna use fractions a lot, and we are gonna become more familiar with these. If I go back and I think about this picture, negative 45 degrees looks like that, negative pi over four looks like this because we have one, two, three, four parts, four, uh, four fourths of a pi in a half a circle. Five pi over six, 
I want to convert this to degrees. So I'm going to multiply with my pi in the denominator. Pi over pi is 1. And then 6 and 180 can simplify to 30. And we get 150 degrees. If I think about that and I'm cutting my top part into 6, this would be 5, 6. It's also 150 degrees. So just starting to visualize what it looks like. 80 degrees, we're going to convert that. So we're going to multiply it by pi, um, pi over 180. You want to make sure you're simplifying your fractions, and that's going to be 4 pi over 9. And 4 pi, we're going to convert that. So I'm going to multiply that, that by 180 over pi. My pi simplify to 1, and I get 720 degrees, which should make sense because 4 pi is two full circles, and 720 is two full 360s. Here's our unit circle. I'm not going to get a lot into it right now. You've seen it in geometry. I just want you to be prepared. We're going to be building it. We'll be building it from special right triangles. Um, we're going to get more familiar with what our radians are and how we do our radians going all the way around the circle. Um, you may want to just draw this out again, as I said, to get for more familiar with it. So to recap, you should be able to draw positive negative angles even bigger than 360. Find coterminal angles, reference angles, always positive, always acute, and then always to the x-axis. Convert between radians and degrees, and just start to familiarize yourself with the unit circle again. Nice job.